let God's people say amen from wherever you are. The greetings in the name and grace and peace of Jesus, our living Christ. We gather this morning for worship, understanding that uh, in these most difficult times, uh, it is good to keep a Sabbath. It's good to understand that God can and will inspire us, encourage us, and offer us the power of God's Spirit. Uh, I'm glad you're worshiping with us this morning, wherever you are. Uh, I will uh, tell you that we are in as much of a fluid situation as you are. And so uh, our offices are currently still open. So know that you can uh, certainly give us a call. Uh, you can uh, come in, although we're inviting you to shelter at home. Uh, what you will notice different this week from last week is that our choir is not here. Uh, they are sheltering at home and uh, we are trying to be a witness and a leader uh, in uh, helping people to do that. So we have a, a very spare staff. I am thankful for our technical folks who are here. I'm thankful for, you will see Stacy and Mo Mona in a, in a minute at the uh, children's time. Uh, I'm thankful for other staff that are here um, who are sitting, by the way, very far apart uh, so that uh, there is uh, not danger. I'm thankful also for Pastor Cheryl. Uh, I would also tell you, Kyle is in the room, and one of the announcements that we have this morning for you is that uh, we will continue doing online worship, uh, and not only uh, will we do the 915 service, but we also, as we are this week, uh, having 1045 uh, contemporary service as well. And so just know that those services will happen at 915 and 1045 on Sunday mornings, but they are also uh, available then the rest of the week if you would like to uh, worship at a different time, uh, or maybe come back to them because, well, Kyle and I serve will be just that pithy, I think, during this uh, most complicated time. Uh, I also would tell you that uh, we continue to look for ways for our small groups to meet uh, on social media platforms. Uh, you will continue to get information about that uh, as the days uh, go by. Uh, would tell you that uh, this Tuesday afternoon, Kyle and I are having a chat with the pastors at three o'clock. And I haven't uh, actually asked Kyle this yet, but we may bring our dogs, um, Gunner and Max, because you know, what makes you happier uh, than, than two dogs with their pastors um, uh, making, a, making a little bit of an entertainment value besides just the chat that we'll have. But we'll be there just to be in conversation, to answer questions, to talk about scripture and, and what is uplifting us uh, during this uh, difficult time. So that's three o'clock this Tuesday afternoon. Uh, I also would tell you that uh, Pastor Cheryl is putting together a team of people uh, who are willing to uh, offer help during this difficult time, most especially uh, for those who are in at-risk groups or uh, maybe of a certain age, chronologically gifted, as we like to say, and shouldn't be out um, shopping for groceries or running errands or getting uh, prescriptions or those things. So we have folks at the church who have volunteered to do that, and, to find, and we will find ways to do that in a very safe way. Uh, as my blog post says, uh, this week, uh, Carmen and Lydia have found the CDC recommended um, um, germ-free stuff to wipe all over everything. And so uh, I think we've all been sprayed down a little bit um, and uh, our, our, our uh, doorknobs and, and latches and everything have as well. And so I hope you're practicing those safe uh, things as well. And we certainly will do that as we uh, send folks out to deliver uh, either food or, or prescriptions and those kinds of things. Um, I also would tell you that to to stay online for children and youth updates. Uh, we continue to look for ways that we can be in connection with you, most especially as uh, our states are closing down our schools for the rest of the semester. Uh, we wanna be a part of the solution uh, for families and for educators who will continue to teach. And so uh, I, would, uh, I would offer that to you as well. If you have questions or wanna be in further conversation, please do not hesitate to call the church. Uh, for the time being, uh, our offices, again, will still be open, uh, but even if we come to a time where we close our offices, we will, we will be available from our homes uh, to continue to be in communication. As we uh, move into this service of worship, uh, I, uh, Cheryl and I were talking, this is one of both of our favorite books. It's called The Preaching Life by Barbara Brown Taylor. Um, and in times of a little bit of insecurity, I tend to turn to my most beloved books uh, and uh, am reminded of um, pieces that me make a difference to me. So I hope this will uh, help you as we enter into worship this morning. That is, in short, what makes me a Christian. As a creature of a God like that, I need a mediator, an advocate, a flesh and blood handle on the inscrutable mystery that gives birth to everything that is. While Jesus is, in his own way, just as inscrutable as God, he is enough like me to convince me that relationship with God is not only possible, but deeply desired by God, who wants me to believe that love is why is the wide net spread beneath the most dangerous of my days. To believe that is an act of faith, 
not a one-time decision, but a daily and sometimes hourly choice to act as if that were true in spite of all evidence to the contrary. Sometimes it feels like pure make-believe. I read the weekend newspapers full of stories about violence and addiction and corruption and disaster, and I wonder, who am I kidding? Or my own life begins to spring leaks, and I lie awake in the middle of the night, faint with fear and anxiety. I want a safer world. I want a more competent God. Then I remember that God's power is not a controlling, but a redeeming power. The power to raise the dead, including those who are destroying themselves. And the red blood of belief begins to return to my veins. I have faith. I lose faith. I find faith again. Or actually, faith finds me. But throughout it all, I am grasped by the possibility that it is all true. I am, or we are, in good hands. Love girds the universe, and God will have the last word. Amen. If you would like to stand where you are and sing with us our opening hymn, we would invite you to do that. favorite Sunday of the month. It is the month, it is the uh, week of the month that the short leggeds come into worship and I get to bring down my blue bag that says Grace United Methodist Church on the front of it and pull weird things out of it and see what the kids have to say. Well, so today the kids we have are um, sort of my height and not quite my age, um, but uh, we are going to uh, invite families and children uh, to know what resources they might turn to in this time of need uh, to keep Jesus as a part of the focus and the security that we can build. So I'll invite Mona, our children's director, and uh, Stacy up, who is the supervisor of Next Gen Ministries, and they will share with you as families how best to help your, your kids. I am Mona. I am the Children's Ministry Coordinator, and I am so happy to be with you guys today. Hi, and I'm Stacy, and I'm the Director of Next Gen Ministries. And here at Grace, it's just really important to us that your children know that they are loved and that they are seen. And while we're in this new season, we might do things a little bit differently, but be sure that we are still going to provide you with the quality, relational, and helpful materials that your children get on a Sunday morning. Each Saturday night, we will be posting the worship songs and the Bible story videos that your children know and love up on our Facebook page and on the children's page of the website. In addition to that, we will be providing you a parent guide so that you can watch these songs and videos with your children and then take them to a deeper level and have fun with activities and games that relate to the lesson of the day. That's right. So this week, our preschoolers and our early childhood friends, so that's going to be birth through pre-kindergarten, they are going to be learning from our favorite person, Ollie, and Ollie is going to be teaching us all about how Jesus taught and told us and invited us to follow him. 
So, we are going to be learning about the 12 disciples, which were Jesus' favorite uh, people to be around. So, this week, um, as you guys learn how to live into a new environment uh, with one another, we are inviting you to follow Jesus into being compassionate and kind and gracious and loving and um, being inviting to those around you and in your family. And for our elementary students, so that's going to be kindergarten through fifth grade, you are going to continue learning about how to DIY forgiveness and we are going to learn about the um, the lost son and the one who was uh, ran away and in turn came back and the father forgave him and so this is going to invite us to continue learning about forgiveness and how we can choose how to forgive and when to forgive and all because God teaches us about that so we invite you again as the season that we're living in to continue to um, offer forgiveness to those around you and to be gracious and kind and loving just like the father is in our story check us out on our facebook and on our website and we um, hope that you have a great time worshiping together as a family this week and you know we hope that you don't just view this as one more thing you have to do and fit into your schedule we really hope that you'll find these resources a way for you and your children to spend some time together relaxing away from the news of the day growing closer to god but most of all, just know that we are here for you. And whether you and your children need to pray, laugh, cry, or just tell us something funny that happened in today, make sure you reach out to us because we would love to connect with you. Thank you. During Lent, we have been introducing various prayer practices to help us grow closer to God and to grow in love and peace with God and our neighbor. We have learned to pray with prayer beads, we have prayed with color, and to practice the daily examine. This next week, we will invite you to try the ancient practice of breath prayer. More guidance about this will be found on the church's app and website, on Facebook, and in Grace Notes. Briefly, breath prayer involves breathing in and out, often short passages of scripture like, be still and know that I am God. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. Or you may want to focus on such phrases as faith over fear, light over darkness. Come, Holy Spirit. Breath prayer helps us to calm our minds as we pray with our bodies. It helps us to abide in Christ as we breathe in the peace of Christ and breathe out our anxiety, worries, and fears. I invite you now to breathe in the Spirit of God as we pray together. Eternal and merciful God, you are our refuge and our strength. You are a very present help in this time of disruption, of uncertainty and turmoil. We gather as your people, anxious, fearful, and worried about many things our health, our jobs, our families, our medical community, our country, and our world. We gather to breathe in your spirit of peace, to center our minds and our hearts, to put our trust in you because you have proved your faithfulness to all generations. Your love has never, your love will never let us go. As we breathe in your peace, we breathe out our concerns for this pandemic that is spreading across our world, remembering all who have lost loved ones and praying for those seriously ill at this time. We pray especially for medical workers on the front lines, for doctors and nurses, respiratory therapists and others who work and support people as best as they can. We also remember those behind the scenes who are seeking to marshal necessary resources and equipment, who are working in labs, who are doing research to lessen the suffering of this pandemic. And we pray for our leaders that they might make wise decisions. And we pray for a spirit of cooperation from all of us in this difficult time. May this crisis bring out the best in us and not the worst. May we not forget our responsibility to one another not least to the vulnerable and the voiceless in our communities. Help us to find ways of keeping in touch and offering reassurance to those with underlying health issues, 
for any who feel particularly vulnerable or in danger at present, for those whose social contacts and senior facilities have been severely curtailed. We also pray for those who have been laid off as their work disappears, for financial hardship, for individual and businesses, for the impact on our economy. We pray for our families with children, for parents making contingency plans for childcare, for home-based work. And we pray for our children who may feel frightened. During this time, may we not forget our faith, but draw strength from it. May our congregation find new ways of living and loving and serving. Strengthen us by your spirit so that we may carry on our lives as best as we are able, looking out for others, being faithful in prayer, and bringing encouragement, hope, and peace, always trusting in you. We pray this in Jesus' name, joining also in the prayer that he has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the pattern, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, we worship in many ways. Uh, it is so different in these uh, most difficult days. But one of the ways we worship is through our giving. It's through our generosity of heart and spirit, our time, our talents, and our finances. Uh, we continue to uh, need for folks to uh, do ministry through and with this church in partnership uh, with your financial lives. It is a difficult time, and we understand that. Uh, we pledge to you to be uh, very responsible for the gifts that we receive, and uh, we continue to hope that in the midst of uh, your prayer life and your reflection, that God will help uh, you to help us continue to do the work and the vision that God has for us. So just now, we'll take a few moments. Uh, there are ways to give that you'll see posted. Uh, you're also more than welcome to uh, send your gifts in by snail mail, as they call it, uh, but know that uh, your gifts make a difference to God's work here and around the world. Let's give generously.
Let us pray. Gracious God, we come humbly before the foot of your cross, understanding that you gave all. And because of that, you lift us up, indeed on eagle's wings. Uh, you bear us on the breath of every new dawn. And so God, we return these gifts to you with grateful and generous hearts, understanding that you are able to do far more with our gifts than we think is possible. And we trust you in great faithfulness. And so we offer these gifts to you for blessing, for consecration, and for multiplying, that both as givers and receivers in your world, we will understand ourselves as your brothers and sisters, beloved children of an ever-present God. In Jesus' name, amen. The first lesson this morning comes from the book of Isaiah chapter 40. It is often referred to as Second Isaiah. It was a word of hope in a time of disruption and suffering in exile. Hear now these words. To whom then will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name. Because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. May God add his blessing to the hearing and the reading of this word. And if you would please stand for the gospel reading. Reading from the gospel of Luke chapter 10, Jesus is on the way to Jerusalem and we hear this familiar story. Now as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks so she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. I talk to when there's no one there to listen who do I lean on when there's no foundation stable I go to the rock I know that he's able I go to the rock I go to the rock of my salvation I go to the stone that the builders rejected I run to the mountain and the mountain stands by me when all around is sinking sand on Christ the solid rock I stand when I need a shelter when I need a friend I go to the rock where do I hide The storms have all passed over. Who do I turn to when those winds of sorrow blow? And is there a refuge in this time of tribulation when my soul needs consolation? I go to the rock. I go to the rock of my salvation. I go to the stone that the builders rejected. I run to the mountain, and the mountain stands by me. When all around is sinking sand, on Christ the solid rock I stand. When I need a shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. I go 
to the rock of my salvation. I go to the stone that the builders rejected. I run to the mountain, and the mountain stands by me. When all around is sinking sand, on Christ the solid rock I stand. When I need a shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. So I'm uh, very quick uh, most often to tell you that uh, God always moves before us. And that one of the ways that that's affirmed to me is that we plan these services uh, far in advance and that um, I plan my scriptures and my sermon titles far in advance and it always amazes me how they seem to fit except when they don't. And so if I'm honest about the times that they fit and it's all a God thing, I, I have to be honest about the times, let's just say they don't. And this was one of those weeks because the sermon title was supposed to be for this week, stick a fork in it, it's done. If you were here, you would laugh. And so I'm hearing you all laugh um, because we've been in this slant journey uh, doing a sermon series on friendship. And, and a piece of that, honestly, is that there are times when our friendships don't last forever. A time when uh, one, one or two or another or three or four or other things happen and either by attrition or by uh, proactive response, uh, we choose to let friendships go. And, and sometimes that's the best thing to do. But I didn't think uh, uh, talking about what it means to let go of friendship really was what I wanted to preach about this morning in the midst of the, uh, of the context that we have. And besides, one of the scriptures was from Job. Um, and if you all know much about Job, you know he had three friends, quote unquote, who came to him and told him he needed to confess even if he didn't know what he'd done wrong because clearly God didn't like him anymore. And I, I didn't think that's what we needed to hear either. So I just wanted to be upfront with you that uh, I purposely changed the, the scriptures and the sermon title because I think we do need strength for the day. Uh, I do think we need the kind of hope that uh, God brought to the people in Isaiah's time. Um, that Pastor Cheryl read, uh, a, a kind of hope that came to a people that were probably nearing the end of their exile, uh, but they had been so defeated that uh, understanding uh, that coming home was a possibility didn't mean that it was going to be easy <laughs> and that the home that they were going to come to was not going to be the same as the home that was left. And so uh, a part of what I have heard myself saying as well as uh, folks that I have talked to in the, in the last couple of weeks has been that nothing will ever be the same again. We won't do things the same way again. And there is both grief to that as well as hope. Uh, there, there's both a, a, a nostalgia that begins to build from the way things used to be, but there is also the possibility of the way things can be because what I know about myself and perhaps the, the human condition is that most of the time, unless we are forced to step back, unless we are mandated to take a breath and to pause, we don't. And it seems as if this is one of those times. I was driving to church this morning and, and the the roads were not quite as busy as they normally are. And I wondered to myself, I wonder what people are doing. Uh, I know that this last week is when they've decided that uh, most of the schools aren't going to meet in session in person for the rest of the year. And, and, and I've heard and seen on Facebook, teachers are mourning that. Students are mourning that. And parents are trying to figure out what to do and, and how best to do it and how best to offer comfort and support and encouragement. And, and that's why we, we wanted Mona and Stacy to be a part of our service this morning to, to say that you're not alone and that we're sort of building the road as we're walking on it. But that's much of what the scriptures are about. Much of what faith is about is building the road as we walk on it. And so these words from Isaiah that really start out in verse 21, I did not have Pastor Cheryl read all of those verses, uh, but, but it starts out, starts out with rhetorical questions. Have you not known, have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, 
the creator of the ends of the earth. And one of the, one of the commentators I read said, if we look at those as rhetorical questions, what we can do with that is to say, surely you have known. Surely you have heard. Surely from the foundations of the earth, you know that God is the creator of all that is. And second Isaiah uses in, in terms of the word uh, creator or create, the word bere, which is translated into power. And it's the only word for, it's only used as a word for create in this scripture and in Genesis 1, verses 14 to 16. And in the scriptures that Cheryl read for us this morning, uh, what it referred to was that God is also the creator of the heavens and that not one star is lost to God. That's important for us to hear. We are not lost to God. And that unlike the, the, the god Marduk and uh, the, the astral gods of the Egyptians, uh, so that the stars and the heavens were gods in and of themselves, what the second Isaiah makes clear and what the, the author of Genesis makes clear is that there are no other gods besides the creator God. So our creator God is the creator of those heavens and stars. They are not gods in and of themselves. A virus is not a god. We're reacting to uh, a virus, we're responding to a virus. It has changed the way that we interact with one another, it's changed the way we worship, but it hasn't stopped us. And it hasn't stopped God in being in relationship with us. It hasn't stopped God being creative in us and inviting us to allow that creativity to work in us even in what seem the most dire circumstances. What I want us to hear is that God has been God of all of history and there have been other times when human beings have been in difficult circumstances and difficult situations, times when people questioned whether God was still relevant anymore. Well, we were questioning that before the virus occurred. We're struggling with that as a church before the virus occurred. And we have the same challenge that these people of God in Isaiah's time has. And that challenge is to trust. Is to trust the relevancy of a creator who, who saw enough beauty that the sun came into being. Who saw enough beauty that, that that sun not only came into being, but it rises each morning. And it looks different each morning that it rises. And it sets each, each evening. And it looks different every evening that it sets. Now, I will tell you very honestly that, that my prayers have been that God at least give us the benefit of the doubt and give us some blue sky and sunshine. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that I don't believe the sun is still there. And that there are still places where it's rising with pinks and blues and purples and setting with just the same and that we will see that again ourselves. The prophet Isaiah says not one star, not one heavenly body is lost to God. If that's the case, neither is any one of us lost to God in this most difficult time. Not even Martha. Oh yes, there's that, there's that story of Mary and Martha. That story that perhaps we like to reduce down to the younger sister being the favorite. <sighs> Hi, Belinda. And the older sister, not. But that's not what it's about, and we know that. In fact, what if we looked at this not as a story of comparison, but a story of completion? Well, what if we looked at it, at it not as a story of who's better, but when is better? Not a, a story of what is better, but why is better? If we reframe it, if we step back, 
if we perhaps have a different perspective. Friends, if there's nothing else that's happening right now by sheltering at home, if there's nothing else that's happening right now, then seeing the world in a way we have never seen it before, it's inviting us to have a different perspective. Jesus is not in this story saying that youngest children are the favorite, although that will continue to be what the way I want to interpret it when I'm feeling that way. <laughs> but legitimately and faithfully, it's not what this story is about. The story is about Jesus inviting both of these women, radical enough in its day, inviting both of these women at this time to understand that they are as accepted as disciples who can sit at the feet of Jesus and listen to Jesus' teaching as all of the male disciples are. We know enough about Jesus to know that he's not saying that what Martha is doing isn't important because we've just, in the chapter before, dealt with the parable of the Good Samaritan. And the parable of the Good Samaritan is about going and doing. And the story of Mary and Martha is about sitting and listening. So it's not either or for Jesus. It's both and. It's a story of completion. Jesus will live out both of these things. And he will live them out with men and women. And he will live them out with lepers and with the able-bodied. And he will live them out with those who have demons and he will live them out with those who don't. He will live them out with those who are bent over or hemorrhaging and have withered hands and dropped feet. And he will live it out with the wealthy and the able-bodied and those who the world deems as a success. He will live it out with the Roman Empire and he will live it out with the Jewish chosen and he will live it out with the Gentiles who've never been invited. He will live out both and going and doing and sitting and listening. He will live that out in ways that as the book I read from earlier says, he will live it out in ways that we can get our arms around so that we can begin to understand what kind of a God we have. And it's that God who seeks to be in relationship with us in all times, in all places, throughout the course of history. And perhaps that's, that's strength for this day. It's the knowledge and the trust that Jesus still has good things to say. And perhaps in these moments in history, he most wants us to sit and listen. Get your Bibles out. There are great stories in there. Go to the parable of, uh, of the prodigal son in Luke. Go to, the, go to the parable of the Good Samaritan in Luke. Go to the story of the bent over woman and her healing in Luke. Are you kind of getting the impression that right now I'm directing you to the Gospel of Luke? <laughs> because Luke was, Luke was thought to have been a physician, a healer. By the way, that didn't occur to me until this week. Now, I've been following the Gospel of Luke in my preaching since January. But isn't it interesting that given what's going on in today's world, in today's context, in, in today's society, that, that this week is when it reoccurred to me that Luke was a physician. Maybe, Pastor Nanette, that's why Luke feels comforting right now. Maybe it's a reminder that God has never left God's people without healers. Physical and spiritual and emotional. And we are called to be that as well. With and for one another. I've been in ministry a long time, but I've never lived through times like this. The world was different after September 11th, and the world is different now. And I, I like to believe that I've been around so long that uh, I can deal with things with equanimity on a continuous basis. None of you laugh. None of you laugh. They're laughing because, for the same reason you all out there are laughing, you know me better than that. I wear my heart on my sleeve. I'm not a crier, but I've cried in the last couple of days for the first time in a long time. I don't usually let stress um, control me in groups of people so that my anger shows. But I did today. 
or this week anyway. And, and I find myself reflecting on that and praying about it. And do you know what I hear? I don't hear a God saying, uh, Reverend Dr. Roberts, you know better than that. How long have you been in training? What I, hear, what I hear God say is, you know, Nanette, there's grace for you too. But watch it. No, I don't hear that part. <laughs> but if you need to hear it, there's grace for you too, moms and dads. There's grace for you too, supervisors, who may be having to lay off employees you know are going to struggle financially. There's grace for you too, those who need to ask for help perhaps for the first time, for food or clothes or somebody to run to the pharmacy for you. There's grace for you too, those of you who feel as if this really isn't affecting you because, because you don't believe it really, <laughs> that it's going to be any big deal. There's grace for medical workers who have to turn people away at nursing homes, even families, because they're not allowed in to see their loved ones. There's grace, friends, there's grace. There's grace for us. There was grace for God's people who didn't really believe that coming back home from exile was going to be all that comforting. There was grace for Martha who said to Jesus, can't you make my sister get up and help me? And there was grace for Mary, sitting at the feet of Jesus, knowing her sister was angry with her, but still feeling like what she needed to do in that moment was just to sit and to listen. So friends, give each other grace in these most difficult days. Share that grace in your neighborhood, in, in your homes. Share that grace with your educators. And educators will share that with your families. Share it with your pastors. And know that we want to share that with you. And as we, as we move as God's people continually through this Lenten journey, God is growing us. I have no, I have no doubt about that. And, and in that growth, we will see new things. We will hear new things. We will experience new things. Not all of them will be optimistic and great, but not all of them are going to be depressing and bad. <laughs> so we have to open ourselves to all of it. That's, that's easier done together than separately. So use those social media platforms. You're, you use those smartphones to call. Use the snail mail. Just spray stuff down before you bring it in your house. And don't doubt. And when you do, call us and we'll give you strength. Don't doubt that God's presence and God's love and God's grace lives with each of us. So may it be. Amen.
Friends, before I do a, a final blessing, I'm going to invite as many of you as would like to hang around, and we are going to have a live feed. And if you would like to ask us questions, make comments, uh, have us uh, do prayer for you or with you, know that you are welcome to, to hang around, and we'll be here as, uh, as long as you would like to be. Um, as we go from this place, and by the way, uh, I didn't take time to have you do a uh, time of shalom, uh, of fist bumping or toe tapping or knee knocking or elbow um, or elbowing each other uh, gently. Um, please, please do that at, in your homes or wherever you are in a, in a safe way. Uh, we miss you. I will continue to say that until we're all together again. We miss you and we pray for you and we believe that God is with each one of us. So go from this worship, not physically, <laughs> go spiritually from this worship, knowing that the grace of God flows through you and lives in you. Go in grace and go in peace. Amen. Amen.